Uh, Bill Henshaw here again, Constitutional Crisis Channel, back from the dead, part two. This will be a brief discussion about events that have taken place since I've returned, and this includes the protests by certain pro athletes, Colin Kaepernick among them, the quarterback for the 49ers, and Megan Rapino, a very fine soccer player for the Seattle Reign, and not standing up for the national anthem when played. And these athletes, most of them probably have no clue just how correct it is what they are doing. And we'll be discussing at length the reasons for it in the future. But it relates, of course, to the relative spate of incidents we've had where innocent blacks have been killed, including Alton Sterling and Baton Rouge recently. And another case in Minnesota where the video shows that you know, the cop pulled a gun and shot this guy in the front seat of the car, had done nothing wrong, had no criminal record, had a concealed carry permit, and yet, this looks, for all the world, to me like second degree murder, and these police are not being punished as yet for these acts, or very little. I'm not even sure about the case of Eric Gardner in New York. I know they had an out-of-court settlement of a civil suit there, but I'm not familiar with the fact that this cop went to jail for any length of time, let alone what happened in San Francisco, where Johannes Mejeli gets, I believe, uh, 24 months for involuntary manslaughter, the bastard was out in 14 for good behavior, and this is the one who shot Oscar Grant in a BART station by confusing his taser with a 9mm clock. If the reverse had been the situation, you know damn well Grant would have got 2,000 volts for the first degree murder of a police officer. This stuff has to stop, and protests should not be construed in any case, certainly not mine and most of these pro athletes, as direct opposition to either rank and file police officers or military. By the way, a short note here, I'm waiting, especially in the New Orleans case, for the attorneys for the defense to assert PTSD as an affirmative defense and or the old standby that the officer saw a gun light and thought the guy had a gun and was in danger of his life. And here they had the guy completely under control on the ground and there was no reason to shoot him, at least the way it looked from the video that I saw. Now, I've heard unofficially that Sterling had quite a bit of a criminal history, but even so, that doesn't excuse this kind of action under these circumstances. And these cops have to start going to jail, and or if they want to invoke the Nuremberg defense about being improperly trained, maybe we get some really responsible people put away for a number of years, and this itself will start changing the tide here. But that's what has to happen. Like I said, no disrespect to the military rank and file, the police officers, but we have to get ourselves reoriented where we're properly interpreting and enforcing the laws that are validly on the books. This is exactly what happened to me when I got sent away 3,000 miles to put in a stamp on an envelope. Any idiot with any common sense knows, and all of them knew before the ink was dry, I couldn't possibly have committed the crime for which I was charged, and that the court would thus never have any jurisdiction. As you will see in succeeding videos, this is how we beat them, because no jurisdiction equals no immunity, even in an otherwise harmless civil rights setting. Stay tuned. Thank you.